Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 18 of creating a space shooter with Godot. So currently whenever our player gets damaged or dies, we are just printing out the player's life to the screen. But we need a heads up display, a user interface, to show some icons up here of how many lives the player is going to have. So first, let's create a scene to represent these little individual life icons that we're going to have. So I'll go to the scene menu and click a new scene. And this time, we are going to create a user interface root node. These are these green nodes here in Godot. So Godot has 2D, 3D nodes, and control nodes, which have special properties which are immensely helpful for creating UIs, user interfaces, heads-up displays, and everything of that nature. We're going to use these control nodes to make our menu screens and everything in the future. But just know that this, that these control nodes have so many amazing uses in different settings that we're only barely, barely, barely going to scratch the surface of them in this series because there's just way too many things we could talk about with them. But just know that they are really powerful and you can do way more than what we are simply making for our game. Okay, now we are going to add a child node here and we are going to add a texture rect node. A texture rect is kind of like a sprite, but it's a control node, so it has all of the control node properties instead. We're going to right click our texture rec and make it the scene root, so it's the first node, and we can delete the default control node. So we've got this texture rec here. Here we can drag in our texture we want for our life. You can have a heart image or anything like that. I'm going to use this life.png image I have, which is just a tiny image of our player ship kind of that's outlined in white. And I'll go ahead and rename my texture rec node here to a life icon, like so. So that's all we need for the life icon. This is just going to represent a single life of our player. So let's save this scene, which is just a texture rect, or essentially a sprite, but it's a control node. And I'm going to create a new folder called HUD to hold all of our heads up display code. And I'll save it as lifeicon.tscene. All right, now we actually have to make the heads up display, the thing that'll actually fit over the screen over here in our gameplay. So we'll create another new scene. We're going to create another control here, a user interface node. And you'll notice that the control node here defaults to the size of our screen. So that's perfect. We're just going to start with adding a child node to this control here. We're going to add an HBox container node. What this node does is it allows us to put ch children nodes under this HBox container and it'll automatically stack them side by side, spaced evenly next to each other. And it's a type of container node. Now, if I just click this Add button just to show you, these control nodes have a bunch of, in the container property, a bunch of different containers that we can use. Things like grid containers, margin containers, um, our HBox and VBox containers. VBox will do the same thing, just vertically instead. And we won't be touching many of these, but I just want you to know that there are many of different selections. You can virtually do anything you need for a UI using Godot here. Okay, I'm getting off track. So, first things first, let's rename our root node control to HUD. This is our heads up display, and let's save this scene before we forget. So I'll save it in my HUD folder as HUD.tscene. There we go. Now this HBox container is going to be our life container. It's going to hold all of the life icons. So if we go into our HUD folder and we drag in our life icon.tscene as a child of the life container, you'll see it appears there. And if we drag another one in to the life container, whoops, not as a child of the life icon, but if we have another one under the life container, you'll see that it automatically positions them and it automatically spaces them out next to each other like this. So if you click your HBox container, our life container here, we're going to change a few settings. First things first is going to be under these custom constant settings. We can actually change the separation or the spacing between the icons. So if we change that to 5, they're all going to be spaced 5 units apart. If we, if we changed it to 50, you can see that they're all spaced 50 units apart. I'm going to keep mine at 5, of course. This is all up to what looks good to you. And I also want my life container here to be a little bit down from the top of the screen. Now, you could use the move tool and move this life container here, like so. However, you usually don't just move things manually when you're working with control nodes. This is getting slightly outside the scope of this tutorial. 
but instead you use things like anchors, margins, and different container objects to position things on your screen. So if we want to move this life container down and to the right a bit, we'll click it, and we will change its margin. This margin left property is the amount of space from the left here, so we can change that to 10, and our container will move in 10 units to the right. Top, we can change that to 10, and that'll move it 10 units from the top downward. And now, that's how we can position our life icons where we want on the screen. We still have a lot of work to do here, but let's save the HUD, and let's get it displaying on our gameplay scene here. So to do that, I'm going to simply drag our HUD.T scene as a child of the gameplay scene here. And you'll notice that all looks fine. And if we save and run our game, we can see the three life icons that we have at the screen. If we make our game bigger, it'll scale just like the rest of the game does perfectly fine. Okay, now there's actually a major issue here that is really hard to see. And in order to see that issue, we're going to have to add our little text box up here that's going to represent the score that the player has, right? We want to be able to track eventually points for our player. That way we can have high scores and all of that. So for right now, I'm just going to minimize my life container here, and I'm going to add a new node to our HUD, and I'm going to add a label node. A label basically lets us write text to the screen. So you can see in the text field here, we can write anything we want. Let's say three zeros, because you start out with a score of zero. I don't know. And I'll rename this label here to score. Now I want the score to be centered on my screen here at the top. So one way you can position things appropriately using the control nodes of Godot is to select your node and go to this layout button at the top. And this will provide you with a bunch of common layout positions in relation to your screen. For instance, top wide will make the label expand to be the entire top of the screen, whereas center right here will just make the label appear in the center of the screen. So I'm going to click top wide and that'll put my label here at the top and then I'll click on my label and I'm going to set the align property to center that way my text is centered in the label all right not looking too bad so far next I'm gonna move it down from the top of the screen a little bit so I'm gonna to go to the margin property of the label and I'm gonna to set top equal to something like 10 just so it comes down from the screen a little bit this looks perfectly fine so let's go to the gameplay and well, something's wrong here our life stuff looks fine, but our label is not centered on the screen. And if we run the game, you can see our label is definitely not centered. It's over here to the left. Why in the world did that happen? Well, basically, a control node does not work properly when it's a child of a node 2D. Our gameplay node here, which is the parent of the HUD, if we follow the lineup, is a node 2D and things will just simply not work appropriately like that. So instead, we have to take our gameplay node here, and because it's not serving us any 2D purpose, we're just putting stuff inside of it, we're actually going to right-click it and click Change Type. And we're going to change the type of this to a simple node. This node is what all 2D, 3D, and control nodes extend from. It's sort of the base node class. And now that we've changed our gameplay here to a simple node and not a node 2D, you'll notice that our text for our HUD center is perfectly fine. And if we run the game, those numbers in our label appear at the top center of the screen, just like as we expected. So again, the reason that happened is because control nodes do not work, or they do not at least position appropriately, inside of a node 2D. So that's why we had to change that to a normal node. So for right now, this is going to be our heads-up display. Now we need the code to actually manage these lives over here. So currently we're doing this by simply adding instances of our life icon scene as children to our life container, to this horizontal box container. Now this is great if we know that we're only ever going to have three lives, but what if we change that? What if we want five lives in our game eventually? Or maybe we, we want to be able to add life to the player as he increases in level or something. So we've got to make a dynamic system to do this. So I'm going to delete the three children I have in there, and I will add a script to our HUD here. I'm just going to call it HUD.GD, like so. You'll notice that this extends control because HUD is a control node. First things first, we need to get a reference to that life container. So on ready var, life container, 
is going to equal dollar sign life container. So we'll just get a reference to that node right there. And next, in our ready function, we want to clear anything in that life container. So for example, if for development we had a couple of life icons here just to see how it would look, we want to clear that out at the start whenever the HUD starts up. So we're going to make a function to do that. We'll call it uh, clear lives, and we'll make that function right here, func clear lives. And what this will do is it'll simply remove all the children for the life container. So to remove all the children of the life container, we're going to go ahead and do for child in life container dot get children. This will basically iterate through all of the children of life container. We will simply do life container dot remove underscore child and we will remove that child whatever it may be in this case these two icons from the container and that'll clear out our lives. Next we're gonna have a function for setting the amount of lives in the life container. So we'll have func set lives and this will take in some lives variable which is an integer like this. So the first thing we're gonna do is clear out the lives so we'll make no children in this life container. And then we're going to say for i in range lives. This is basically going to create a variable for, this is basically going to create a for loop from the number 0 up to but not including the number of lives that we want to set. So if we passed in the number 2 here, we'll iterate through the number 0 and 1. So we'll iterate two times. And what we will simply do is go ahead and do life container dot add underscore child and we need to add an instance of our little life icon scene. Remember in order to create an instance of a scene we have to first preload it. So at the top we'll do var p life icon set that equal to preload in our HUD folder our life icon, life icon dot t scene here. And we will simply do life container dot add child our p life icon dot instance we don't have to set the position of it or anything for control nodes because this hbox container will determine how they should essentially be positioned and sized. So if we run the game, our HUD should simply clear lives and we should see none of those on our screen. And that is the case. But if we do set lives and set it equal to 6 over here in our ready function, then hopefully we'll see 6 of those icons, yep, right up here at the top of the screen. All right, that's pretty sweet. Now there is actually something that is still wrong with this, and that's over here in this clear lives function. You see, this removes all the children from the life container. We basically remove whatever child we're iterating over. But this child is never actually freed. It's never deleted. In fact, if you uh, control click on the remove child function, you'll see it says removes a child node, but the node is not deleted and must be deleted manually. So we have to remember to do that. So in our HUD, after we remove the child from the life container, we're going to do child.q free. Remember, that queues up this child to be deleted at the end of the current frame. So it's really important that we don't forget that because we don't want just random life icons sitting around the scene doing nothing not visible. So we now have a way to set any amount of lives that we want in our HUD. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.